What's up? Hey, what's up, man? I just want to let you know that I'm going to be about an hour, hour and a half, maybe even two hours late. Why? Uh, well, some stuff kind of came up around the house that I really need to take care of, and uh, I apologize, but I will be there as soon as I can. You better be kidding. No, I'm dead serious, man, and like it's it's kind of important, but. Hello? You gonna hear me? Yes, Turd Ferguson. Well, I got a load of bad reception here at the hospital. Uh, one of my family members got hurt, so I'm, I'm gonna be a few hours late or may not even make it in today. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'll let you know how they're doing. Okay, I hope it, I hope everything's all right. All right, thanks, bye. Keep me posted, bye. <laughs> what do you say? It's a deal, it's a go. <laughs> go Sucker! Take off. Really, man. <laughs> Oh, oh my God, this is amazing. What, turn your lights out a little bit? Yeah, please do. Hey, where's the popcorn at? Well, that's definitely not the popcorn there. Yeah. This time on Graveyard Cars. The hood ornament bounces off the hood, hits the windshield, I got the top down, I caught it in midair. So in the case of our Hemi GTX, it's a four-speed car. So you have two axle packages that you can choose from. I know you were at the studio because you got the key. Bubble. There is no bubble. Bubble, bro. We're supposed to be here at 7 o'clock. Remember to work on my car last night? Honest mistake, and why are you getting so pissed off? You don't have off? a call, a phone? Now, see, this is interesting, because today these cars are big dollar cars, they're collector cars, but back in the day, somebody was pulling a trailer with this. And that, my friend, is an engine. That is an engine. Got that car coming to get you, Barbara. The unburied dead. My name is Mark Warman. I work with my worst enemy, Darren Kirkpatrick. Give me a gun! And my son-in-law, Josh. Whoa! Along with my best friend, Royal. Well, all right. And our newest team member, Holly. This is exciting. We bring dead cars back to life. If we don't kill each other. Oh, Mark. Oh. Oh. It's gonna be a bloodbath. Oh. Okay, so it's going to be a good week this week, right? Here's why. Number one, you'll notice Chrome Dome isn't here. Derek is here. Derek has been moved up through the he's chain because he's behind. here every single... Well, he is, that's one nice thing is I don't have to worry about the bald jokes. Graveyard Cars is getting so busy nowadays. We have so many cars, so many clients and responsibilities that I don't have time or the desire to babysit any longer. Uh, Royal wants to be gone. Royal can be gone. I'm not, I'm not going to chase him down. I got Derek, who's been with me for a couple of years. Uh, he's proven himself time and time again to not only do good quality work, but to be responsible and reliable. He's been doing a phenomenal <laughs> job, and I know that upsets you, because Who I asked you to do something. Derek has. Oh, yeah. okay. Been doing a phenomenal job. Derek, paint that car. You know what I get? I don't, I'm not, you're not paying me. You know I, get Every time Derek I get a car painted. I get a car disassembled. Car, paint I get engines car put together. Paint. He can match paint beautifully. No, I've, I've seen him seen spot it. paint, complete pearl paint jobs, spot paint him, and still have him come out. You're perfect. colorblind. You can't, you can't paint. You're colorblind. You can't paint. I did a great you job on that paint. piece for that challenge. You can't paint. The 1967 Plymouth GTX 426 Hemi four-speed car. I need you to get it cleaned up. Mm. Brett Torino and Aaron McLeese are coming up Ooh, here. Brett Torino. Brett, and you know I've talked about him before. Why Brett Torino is going to be up here. I thought he's a Mopar guy. Here we go again. This is classic Darren picking on somebody because of their last name, looking for the downside, looking for the negativity. The guy's last name's Torino. Get over it. Okay, it's not a car collection named Torino. His last name is Torino. The Torino collection is Mopar's. Darren knows that. Just another way to bring people down. He has the Torino collection, which is he the most force? amazing Mopar's on the planet. No, the Torino collection. Torino's his last name. I thought he was a Mopar guy. Now I can understand why Royals never here. I wonder how long I'm going to be able to put up with all of this. What is with he you, said he's got Darren? A, he's got a what Torino. is with you? He said he's got a Torino collection. Why are you folding your you arms know? like, like? I get where Shut you're up. going at. Let, but him, let, him, let him lose. We've played him long enough, right? Yeah. Back in the water cage. About six months ago, I received a phone call from Aaron McLeese of the Torino Collection um, asking me if we had any room to do any more restoration work. They had seen the show. They had seen the cars that we do. They were very impressed with it. And so after discussing the, the terms and the conditions of a restoration, we put a deal together and had the car shipped up here to Graveyard Cars. Point being, 
<laughs> we got to get the car disassembled this week too because we've actually had it for a couple of months here and we're a little, I don't want to get any further behind. We've been a little bit. I don't want to get any further. We want to inventory every single piece that comes off of it. We're going to show them how it's done right. What's the first thing we're going to do? Ask Derek what we do next. Disassemble. That's, that's good. Anyways, What's the first thing we're going to do? We're going to clean the GTX. What year is it? Uh, 67. What motor? Uh, 426 Hemi. How many horsepower? Uh, 425. Very good. Four speed or automatic? Four speed. Good. What are we going to do to it? We're going to clean it. And then what we're going to do to it? Raise it up on the bin pack. Let's go start getting the GTX ready. Okay, you ready? Let's go. You know, uh, 1967 was the very first year for the GTX, and we've talked about it before that it was the, one of their very first muscle cars that was also a luxury edition. It's amazing to me that a company like Chrysler would come out with an introductory year like 1967 and not just be walking on eggshells to say, hey, how's the market going to like our 67 GTX? It's all new. They said, fool you, I don't care if you like it or not. We're going to put a 426 Hemi in it, and we're going to make it convertible. And if you don't like that, we're going to put a four-speed in one, too. So Mark wants me out here working on the 67 GTX Hemi convertible car for Brett Torino. I got to say, downright, this is probably one of my favorite cars. Not only because it's a Hemi car, but because they've only made 17 of them. Never want to do this with a dry rag. Make sure it's damp. She'll scratch the car. Along with all the other 30,000 things that we have to do here, getting this thing disassembled is definitely a priority that needs to be taken care of, but I don't see it happening. You know, Mark's not out here helping out like he should be. I understand his, his place is in the office now, keeping the chair warm. Brett is one lucky man. That's all I've got to save. God, I love this car. I'm going to get the hoist going, lift it up in the air, and haven't heard anything else after that. So I, I guess I'm kind of going to wait for what Mark has in store. Going up. In 1969 to 1971, you could order a cold air induction hood on most Chrysler muscle cars. On a Plymouth Roadrunner, what did they call that cold air induction hood package? Was it the air grabber, the ram charger, the shaker? The answer coming up after the break. So what did Plymouth call their cold air induction hood on the Roadrunner? The answer is the air grabber. The code for a cold air induction system in 1969 to 1971 was the N96. If you had a Dodge muscle car, they called that the Ram Charger. If you had an E-body, a Cuda or a Challenger, they called the cold air package the Shaker Hood. And if you had a Plymouth muscle car from 1969 to 1971, they called that cold air hood the Air Grabber. Therefore, our Plymouth Roadrunner has an Air Grabber hood. Visit GraveyardCars.com to learn more. Not only do I have to deal with Darren and Josh calling in to work saying they won't be here, I also have to find a replacement for Royal who's missing in action. And I have to get the 67 Hemi GTX prepped and ready for the owner's visit. And after that, it needs completely disassembled. When Brett and Aaron showed up this morning, it was great to meet with them. I decided I wanted to give them a quick tour of the shop. Just remember that if you go to put one of your own hockey sticks on, it's a two-man job. My name is Brett Torino. I'm Aaron McLeese. Aaron and I work together uh, in a collection that I own, and uh, primarily Mopar cars. I've had a love for Mopar ever since I was a young man. 
One of my favorite cars is sitting behind me right now, which is why we're here. Hold that thing out, have somebody down here holding it out and watching that distance. See, this one I did with Darren, which I hate saying he did anything right. But in this case, he did hold it out right and allowed me to put this on. Where the other one, I was doing it by myself, so I'm going like this and I'm squeegeeing it and I'm just not paying attention and I start encroaching that style line and then coming back down again. You know, we found Mark and it's kind of interesting. And this again, you know, is a reason that you know, we're so happy to be working with you on these cars, is that you can go buy a lot of these parts today and just get them on the car, a lot of this new stuff. It's a bear because it really isn't right as correct as it should be. Do you see that a lot in these cars when we, you work we, on them? You see it in things. You, you see it in trim. You see it in ornamentation. You can even see it in sheet metal. You know, 25 years ago, when I started restoring these cars, there was little to nothing available. There were still some things that were new old stock, original Chrysler parts, that were more readily available than they are now. But the aftermarket and the reproduction world was non-existent. With the advent of companies like Auto Metal Direct, it has allowed us to really shine. For a long time, the only door handles you could get for these were the ones Chrysler was selling over the counter, which they said Cuda and Challenger were the same. Well, Cuda and Challenger aren't the same. One, the Cuda has a convex, and the Challenger has a slight concave to it. You, they both fit the opening, but if you actually look at a lot of the cars, you'll see that on a like on a Challenger, if it's got a Cuda handle, you can run your finger right into the edge of that. Have you guys seen the Daytona? No, I'd love to see it. <laughs> As I started to collect these cars and go through my career, I realized there were a lot of parallels. What I did professionally, which was restoring homes, building homes, creating environments, I was just crazy passionate about the detail. I looked at these cars and realized that there was a way of restoring these things correctly. And the joy of owning these cars for me in my life today is having them correct. Brett actually owns a Charger Daytona. Uh, he was telling me it is, I think it's the red with a black stripe, but it's a Hemi, numbers matching, and a four speed. So it's like, I mean, that's about as rare <laughs> as it gets on the planet. So he is very well aware of what they need to look like when they're done. And that's why I think he appreciates the Daytona that we're doing at the stage it's at right now. Uh, he's not as familiar with the assembly line process and the things that took place, the things that transpired from the time that car left the assembly line as a Charger RT, and then soon, within a few short weeks, became a Daytona Charger. What's the deal behind this here? This is fascinating, taking a look at this rear window assembly. Well, it's, yeah, this is actually really interesting stuff because I had not done an actual Daytona before or a Superbird. I'd owned one, but I, didn't, I wasn't really up to the assembly line conversions that were done back in 1969 by Creative Industries. But I have learned subsequently that, and I knew this part, that all of these chargers started life as a Charger RT, all the Daytonas, and they were converted into the uh, Daytonas. And so what you see here, this is the original urethane from that original picture window back window, the classic Dodge Charger with the inset back glass. It's still all there and intact. All they did was kick that window out and put a plug in it and then bonded it off and smoothed it out. But they left all of this original upper deck filler panel and the uh, glass opening in there and then they just cover that with headliner. It's, it's Yeah, it's crazy. But it looks like it would take two windows in there and it actually just takes this one here. So that's not something you or Darren did? No, no, oh. normally, yeah, so now if you come up to get your car and I've left a bunch of old urethane and I try to tell you the same story, you might call me. Okay, all right. It on it. <laughs> but, but trust me, that really is the original urethane that welded the glass in back in 1969 when this car was built. People don't realize just how crudely yeah. these cars were put back together in the day. And when you start going back through them, it, yeah. you just... This... And you're really trying to... to emulate the look yeah. and, and the process, it, it was horrible. Yeah. I mean, my body and paint is 10 times better than the factories yes, is, and I is. get crap from a few guys, but it's guys that couldn't do either one. They couldn't do it good or bad. They're just saying something because they think they know. You know, this GTX, it represents everything that was great about Detroit. You know, it's a Hemi, it's a four-speed car, it's a big car, and I just love it. I mean, it's just, you know, there's certain things that you love. This car I love. It just. I love everything about it. I love the way it rides, the looks, and it's just a gorgeous car. 
Trying to ask Brett what his favorite car is is a lot like asking what your favorite child is, no different than how I am. And there's just always been something about this car, no different than how it starts, how it runs, how it drives, but there's always been something that has stood out. And for it to sit amongst all these beautifully restored cars, whereas this is basically pretty much original with the exception of a minor paint job sometime in the 80s, it just, it needed to be done. So I'm driving it up to my ranch. Going back close to two years ago now, and all of a sudden I see the hood ornament wobble, bounces off the hood, hits the windshield, I got the top down, I throw my arm up, I grab the ornament, I caught it in midair, and at that point I knew it was time to get some work done on the car. <laughs> in the conversation with Mark, I was quite blunt with him. I said, the car runs and drives great. Uh, even compared to modern fuel injection, this car roll is turnkey. You get it and it will start for you every time. The one thing, that you are not to touch, Mark, because there are a lot of holes in the desert in Las Vegas where we're from. You don't touch the exhaust. Aaron loves the sound of the GTX. It, it does have a different exhaust system on it than it came with from the factory, and he wants to make sure that that car, even though the rest of it is 100% OEM correct, he wants it to sound the same. The car sounds amazing. I want to keep the sound. If you touch the sound, you might have an accident at work. Thank you so very much for your time. I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you very right. much. It's Pleasure. great to see you oh as always. God. Good to see you, man. <laughs> now that the guys are pretty much done and heading back home, uh, it's time for us to knuckle down, get the GTX up in the air, get it disassembled, get it inventoried, get the body ready to go off to the dip company. I trust, at least I hope, that the car will come back to us in a better form than what we sent it to him. Oh, I'm so excited about the car. I can't wait to get the dang thing back, hop in it, turn the key, and drive it. Those axle groups mean something to the rest of the vehicle. Now you're going to go back on our agreement? Oh, my God, there's no winning. Why are you screaming? You better hope it's not damaged. Had a really great time with Brett and Aaron coming out. It was a wonderful visit. Now that they're gone, it's time to turn and burn. I gotta get the GTX inventoried, then disassembled. And I still have to get to the bottom of why Josh and Darren aren't showing up. So in the case of our Hemi GTX, it's a 1967 factory 426 Hemi. It's a four-speed car. So the minute that becomes a four-speed car, you have two axle packages that you can choose from. You can choose from the A33, which would have given you a 3.54 to 1 gear ratio axle, which was what we call the Dana 60 rear axle. It's a sure grip. Or the A34, which would give you 410 gears in the back, 4.10 gear ratio. So from 69 and 70 in your Mopars, if you had a 440 cubic inch engine or a 426 Hemi, and even on the 440, you could have had a six pack, six barrel or just a four barrel, wouldn't have mattered, you would have got what they called the Hemi four speed, which was an 18 spline input shaft. The coarser the splines on the input shaft, the tougher the transmission. The bearings are a little bit bigger in that transmission as well. You also got mandatory Dana rear axle. That's the nine and three quarter inch ring gear on a sheer grip chassis. And you'll notice the size of it. This projects a little further on the Dana than it does on the eight and three quarter. That means your drive shaft is also special for an eight and three quarter versus a Dana. You, a lot of people think, well, you can use the same drive shaft. It's a little bit shorter on a Dana because of how far the pinion project. Another quick way that you can tell if your Dana just looking underneath the car is look at the rear cover. An eight and three quarter rear axle assembly, which you could not get behind a 440 or a 426 Hemi, the last engine group you could have got a 23 spline eight and three quarter rear axle was behind the 383 or the 472. This pan you'll notice unbolts from the rear. It uses 10 bolts, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 bolts that hold this cover on. An eight and three quarter is a housing that has no removable rear cover. You drop the carrier out the front. They call that a pumpkin unit or a pig unit. So the Dana, quickest thing you can do is look and see if you got 10 bolts holding it on there. That tells you it's a Dana looking at it. After that, you can look for ID tags that say whether it's 354 or 410. And we learned that that's the difference between an A33 and an A34 package. In addition to getting the Dana rear axle and the 18 spline input Hemi four speed transmission, you got a few other things. With a track pack, A33 or A34, 69 through 71, 
guaranteed you the 26 inch max cooling package. That means that you got a 26 inch radiator core. You also got a seven blade torque drive fan. Those were mandatory. You got heavy duty suspension. And in the case where you didn't get disc brakes as an option, you would have got heavy duty drum brakes. In the 70 E body, 70 and 71 E body, if you got an A33, which tells us already, it's the 18 spline input Hemi four speed, the Dana rear axle assembly. The A33, you had optional disc brakes on the front. On the A34, you got mandatory. If you had a 410 gear ratio rear axle on the 410, you would have gotten disc brakes in the front. That immediately took the 11 by three heavy duty drums off, gave you a 10 inch rear brake and a disc brake in the front. So if you've got a 410 Dana setting out in a yard somewhere and you walk up to it, if it's out of a 70 or 71 E body, it has to have 10 inch brakes in the back, not 11, because that was mandatory with the 410 gears on the A34 axle package. A lot of you guys will probably have to write this stuff down by just, you know, kind of get it right off the top of my head like that. Another interesting fact too, in 1970, even though you got a 426 Hemi cubic inch putting out 425 horsepower, the clutch diameter was dropped from 11 inches in 1969 to 10 and a half inches. Don't know why. It also went to an aluminum bell housing from a cast iron bell housing. So basically what we're talking about is starting at the front, if you've got an axle package car, it's a four speed, it's a Mopar, it's 1969, 1970, 1971, those axle groups mean something to the rest of the vehicle relative to what transmission it got, what rear axle it got, then what brakes it got, what heavy duty cooling and suspension it got. Those are all indicative of those alphanumeric codes that are on the fender tag, A33, A34, and that's just dealing with the four-speed transmissions. I mean, I could go on for hours like this. Yeah, I give you all you want. <clears throat> Cut. What's that? Give me the key to the studio. I, I need to go over the there. You got the only key to the studio. I've only got one. Nope. I gave it to Josh. So he could lock up because we went to lunch. He was the last one out. When Royal had won the contest for making the video, I gave him the only extra key I had to the theater. His reward was that he could go in there with his family and watch a movie. I think that was really cool. I went over there yesterday to the studio, to my theater, to find popcorn scattered on the floor and empty candy wrappers. I find out it wasn't him. He had lent the key to Josh earlier in the week, which explains why Josh and why Darren called in sick on Monday. I had a hunch. The hunch was confirmed when I went up to Royal and asked him where the key to the studio was. Turd! You. Yes, Mark. Get all your what personal stuff do done? Do personal Get stuff all your work. personal things done? Yeah, why? Well, Why don't are you walk away so from close me. I'm, I'm asking you a question. You get everything handled? All the stuff? <laughs> yeah. Really? Okay. Everything okay? Do I need to change your hours around? Why are you, what's the deal? They were over there defying my wishes, lying to me, watching movies on their own like they had, like they were entitled to it. Nothing makes me madder than that. I, I think that's lying. I think it's chicanery. And, you know, I put a security system in at Graveyard Cars. I'll put one in at the theater. It doesn't matter to me. Okay? If I can't trust you, then... I'm gonna watch you. Cause I know you I know you were at the studio because you got the key. Bubble. There is no bubble. Bubble, bro. You talk you know Royal stupid. You know he can't say no. I don't think Josh took advantage of me. I don't he didn't ask me for it. So he lent you the key and that's what you guys was doing. Mark is a huge overreactor. You violated an order, a direct order, which if if this was Gitmo, you'd get a code red. You're damn lucky it's not. Given I kinda did tell a little lie. But, I mean, it's, if I would have told him where I was and what I was doing, he probably would have drove down there and tried to manhandle me out the door. Darren told me to. It was all Darren's idea. Darren told you to jump off the building when you jump off the building? No, that's completely yeah. stupid and asinine. No, I wouldn't do that. LA cars are different. Why are you in here when I asked you to be out there and start working on the Charger? Nice look. I'm Congratulations, looking at, Rupert. I'm looking at decals. Nice on feet, doors nice stuff. legs, nice look. What you're dealing with is you're dealing with a couple of guys that are blaming the other guy. So one guy's guilty and one guy's a patsy, according to them. Did you really coerce Josh into getting the key from Royal so you guys could go in the studio and watch a movie? And that's what, really what where you, you were what at. What are you talking about? 
Well, I said, where'd you get that? He goes, Mark said it was okay to watch a movie, so I got the key from Royal. So do you want to go watch a movie? Mark said it was okay. So Josh tells Darren that I told him that it was okay, and that's what made him go over there and do that? Because you guys been working hard and everything, and go take a couple hours off, watch a movie, have a little bit of fun for once. Have some popcorn, eat some candy bars. Susie said it was okay to have some candy bars and stuff, so I thought, well, why not? If I said it was okay that they go over and watch it, then why would they need to call me and make an excuse? Well, you know, when Mark called, I thought Mark was just playing a joke on me like he didn't know where I was, when really I thought Mark knew where I was. Called me and told me you had an emergency at the hospital, and I, I was did. empathetic I to did. that. Did I call him? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I have to keep making up stories. I have a Who went to the hospital? Well, I'm sure there must have been one of my Who relatives was somewhere that was in the hospital. You just made the list. No, I don't mind. You know, I don't mind that they weren't here this morning. I don't know what they were doing. Now I got to go over and figure out how much candy they stuffed in their fat little faces and how much popcorn's missing. I think Mark is overreacting. Hanging out, trying out the theater chairs, see which one they like so they can put their name on it. I shouldn't have to pay for that. I hope they didn't eat up all the popcorn. I shouldn't get stabbed in the back and have to buy the knife that went in. Because I would like someone to get there. True or false? The famous hockey stick stripe was only available on the 1970 Plymouth Cuda. You have to cut me after the break. <laughs> so was the hockey stick stripe only available on 1970 Plymouth Cuda? The answer is yes or true. In 1971, the Plymouth Cuda carried a completely different stripe design. It was commonly known as a billboard. It covered approximately two thirds of the rear quarter panel and a portion onto the front door, which also included the engine call out on the front portion of the door. Visit graveyardcars.com to learn more. We got the rear brakes, rear axle, rear suspension, transmission, engine and front suspension documented and cataloged for the 67 Hemi GTX. Along with that, I'm still trying to get to the bottom of the mystery of why two guys are anywhere but at work. Hey, 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 hey. What's the deal? No, no, what's the, the deal? deal? Is that how you're gonna stop me? Hey, where were you? What do you mean, where was I? Last night, 7 o'clock. I was probably here, Darren. What do you think I spend most of my life here? You know, I don't know what happened with Josh last night. I showed up to his house a little bit before 7 o'clock. I had his favorite Dutch Brothers drink. We were supposed to be here at 7 o'clock. Remember to work on my car last night? Honest mistake, and why are you getting so pissed off? You don't have off? a call, a phone? He was supposed to be there. So I waited till a little bit after 7. I called him, no answer. 7.15, no answer. 7.30, no answer. Well, yeah, I went over there all the made a special effort yeah. to go do this. I'm no sorry. phone? I apologize. Hey, Mark. Where were you? Don't get bent out of shape about it. It's OK, buddy. You're as bad as Mark. Oh, easy there. You're like Mark anymore. Dude, I'm going to crack I you like a piece of peanut brittle. I can't depend on you at all. You can't depend on me. Your car's well, in my house. Yeah, but you're crazy. You're that flipping was a deal. Out. Oh, no, no, no. Did you freak if it I out? If I didn't want to work on it, I left it here. Darren is absolutely insane. Now you're going back on the deal. OK, what are we doing last night at 7 o'clock? Possibly could be doing at 7 o'clock. I was here, Darren. Doing what? I was here at 7 o'clock, completely forgot about him and I working on his car. Now you're going to go back on our agreement? Oh my god, there's no winning. I apologized to Darren, and he still says that, no, you weren't here. No, you weren't there at 7 o'clock. That was a deal. OK, we, and we I apologize. Darren, I apologize, okay. too. I said I was sorry. All right. But then again, there's nothing written in stone, OK? Your there's car's verbal, at my house. Verbal. Nothing's ever been discussed. And nothing's ever been written out. A verbal agreement is good as a written contract any day in court. You know, you want to get this done just as much as I do, or else I wouldn't have volunteered to take your car and put it in my garage. I did that for a reason, because I want you to get it fixed. So when do I want to work on the car? Um, this weekend. Deep down inside, Darren is always playing the game. That's what Darren does. That's what Darren's always going to do. Let's do it this what weekend. What time? What day? Uh, Sunday. What time? 11 o'clock. AM or PM? OK. Uh, how do you talk or communicate to somebody like Darren? You can. Let's go to the store. You want to get something? No, I'm not still mad at Josh. I forgive easy. I'm a good person. Let's go to the store. Help me up. I'm getting old. You are getting old. Oh, God. Where were you last night? I was, I was here, Darren. Okay. We just sit back and laugh at it. You know, there's really nothing to get upset about. So I think it's actually going to better our relationship. I'm going to see your time. Whoa. Did you almost hit that, really? I mean, to be honest, his car can stay at my place as long as it needs to. Was that an accident, accident or on purpose? <laughs> did, did it hurt the door any? <laughs> <laughs> So today we're getting ready to disassemble the 67 Hemi GTX four-speed convertible. It's not that old of a restoration, but it has been restored. 
uh, just wasn't done exactly perfect. And so uh, Brett being a perfectionist like myself would like us to disassemble it, uh, restore it correctly. If we can use some of the original parts, which is why this is gonna take a little bit longer to do, the disassembly, we're gonna be more cautious, then we will reuse them. Um, I put a moratorium on certain things in the shop so that we can all get along a little bit better. Mark came up to me first thing this morning and said, no screaming. I scream, it's punishable by being terminated. Um, we're, there's no screaming because the screaming is making me crazy now with Josh and I notice that I'm having that that pack of wolf syndrome, that, that dog pack syndrome. When he starts screaming, I just respond and next thing you know, I'm insane. I don't scream and if I do scream, it's because he's wound me up so much to where I just want to verbally tear his head off. Royal, Darren, they're in reasonably good moods. Uh, I also have a moratorium on Darren, not to say anything negative and wind me up and Royal not to disappear for five or 10 minutes and then come back super happy. Royal, I think what we ought to do on this one is we ought to drop the back end down, the rear axle assembly, and try it that way, because I think it's balanced well enough. That's only probably like 400 pounds or 500 pounds, whereas when we pull the front ends out first, that back end is just enough to tip it. So let's take the rear differential out of it. That'll mean we need to get a, a slide plug for here, a, um, a yoke to slide into there, okay? Okay. So get me a yoke to slide into it out of one of the other cars we've taken the motor and transmission out of lately, and get me a drop light. Okay. Well, you, you guys start rounding up tools. Do you, do you record the sound of the engine? The one thing that you are not to touch, Mark, you don't touch the exhaust. Well, apparently he installed a camera here. Was that here last time? I want to record the exhaust system on this car. Why are you screaming? You better hope it's not damaged. We will not continue the disassembly of the GTX until I hear that exhaust system, record it, and document its exact tone. The good news is I think I figured out a way to catch Dumb and Dumber over at the theater. Sound boy. God dang it. I need your help. I, I actually almost overlooked one of the most key details, which was that exhaust system and the sound. Uh, after uh, Aaron had told me how important it was to him, I decided that I would just uh, catalog the sound digitally. I want to record the exhaust system on this car. The owner wants the sound exactly the same as it is right now, so I can't even change the exhaust on it. He loves the sound of it. That's all I know. He loves the sound of it, and that's what I've got to put back. I'll detail it, but it needs to sound the same. So if he comes up here and says it sounds different, I'll be able to show him the graph of exactly, it's the exact same duplicate audio, just the CSI stuff. Got that, Soundboy? Yes. So I had Soundboy come over, put the microphone against the two pipes, measure it at 1,000 RPM, 2,000 RPM. Then we can put it on one of those funny graphs that shows all the peaks and everything, so we can actually look at it that way. I'm going to probably want it like right here in the middle. That way, it's, it'll take both audios and put them together. He can't say the left pipe's louder. I mean, they're, they're great guys, but I ain't dying for somebody's exhaust not being the same. There's no way I'm going down for, for the wrong exhaust. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a businessman. You know, Chrome Dome thinks it's so damn funny when he scares people. It's, it's immature. <laughs> 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 He'll, he'll zap you in the ribs when your back's turned to him. He'll, he'll, he'll make a loud noise to shock you. So he had the horn honking coming. <laughs> oh, I got you! you got Good! That's a payback for the other day. I just wasn't actually intending it to hit Royal. I didn't realize that his head was closer to the horn than Darren's. It was actually intended for Darren. But yeah, that's payback. That's great. Nothing makes me happier. Kill it. I got solid lifters in Doc, it. yeah, solid lifters. I can hear them rattling, yeah. I like it. Sounds good. Document in your file that that is at 2,000 RPM. A steady 2,000 and a rev to 3,500. Okay, let's get this thing apart. What are you waiting for, Alice? Raise it up, chrome dome. You get the light? Yes, I did. Did you see me scare Royal? Yes. Don't we want it down? We're gonna take the rear axle out of it first. 
Okay. Where were you? Were you not there for that? Sorry, Mark. Well, can I lift this up a little higher? <laughs> well, I won't be able to reach it if you do. Okay, well, you know, I'm straining my back. You're 30 years old, man. I don't care. Don't I don't want to strain that my back. back crap. That, if you head down that road, you're daring in six months. Okay, well, now here's the part where I would scream at you. All I'm asking is, can I look this up? How about you don't do anything? You just fetch us stuff as we need it. I need a box to put the rear suspension pieces in, preferably one of the plastic totes somewhere. Good. Glad we're on the same page for once. He keeps pushing me to the point to where I want to scream at him and tell him to shut the, shut the hell up. But, you know, I'm not going to stoop down to his level. They say the first step to recovery is admitting you got a problem. Josh doesn't want to admit it. That's fine. But I have seen that there are support groups for screamers. Mark's an antagonist. I'm going to break his nose. Well, this, now, see, this is interesting because today these cars are big dollar cars. They're collector cars. But back in the day, somebody was pulling a trailer with this. That's cool. I mean, that's what they were built for. They were utilitarian vehicles. One nut hold those in. They're very ready to drop out. Did you, did you take the shocks all loose up here at all? Um, they need to come off. But usually what I do is I take the axle out first. So I'm at a point now where these are ready to come out. They just need some weight off of them. And then we can take the shocks and those off at the same time. Take it back. I get, oh, sorry. Well, you're only going to go back that far. It's not going to go out. Nope. Okay, just gonna have to wait until later, huh? I guess so. Later, Gator. Okay. Alright, you done playing with it now? It's not going so well. We got Jared, too many come people on, trying to man. do too many things. What did I do? You're right there by my ear. Everywhere I go, you're just right there. I'm I rest sorry. my case. Uh, we just about got the rear axle assembly ready to come out. Uh, again, we're taking our time. We're moving slow. I want to make sure that we save and preserve the integrity of any original parts that are underneath there so we can recondition them and reuse them. There it goes. Okay. Straight up D slowly. Okay, here we go. Nice job, Royale. So it came out fine? Yeah. Why is the exhaust still under the car? I told you to get it out. I don't want to take any chances lowering stuff around it. If it is the slightest bit damaged, I'll tell you what. I'll turn the owner loose on you, and then I'll finish off what he doesn't. Why are you screaming? You better hope it's not damaged. There's no screaming, because the screaming is making me crazy. Basically, everything's going great. We got the rear differential down on the ground. The problem is I told Josh specifically to make sure that exhaust was out of the way because I didn't want to have any chances of it getting damaged because we're reusing it. So right now, Royal's raising it up in the air, and I'm going to inspect it. And if there's a little bit of damage from somebody with a slipping wrench or a slipping pry bar or a, or a hammer, then he's a dead man. And I ain't playing this time. He got lucky. He got, he got really lucky. There's no damage. You hear that, Puko? You got lucky, friend. Next time when I ask you to do something, do it. I don't think that the guys are used to taking a car apart like this. I mean, I've taken all kinds of cars apart, but I don't think that they have taken one apart where it's so important to preserve the integrity of the original parts that are coming off. You know, they're, they're three baboons, you know, with wrenches and screwdrivers. Well, that's going to drop when you do that, Darren. What do you want me to do? This is because Lurch had to have it 20 feet in the air. You can lower it. You lower Just it? do it, please. I'm begging you. <laughs> we won't have to turn up much. OK. Ta-da. Hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, stop what you're doing for Darren. A lot of the components on it are survivor, not just survivor that they made it, but Survivor good. Like the door interior trim panels, they're beautiful. The seats are actually beautiful. Um, I've got Brett's blessing that whatever we mix new and old together, as long as it's in the best interest of the car, he doesn't care. Well, you can see here where somebody has uh, replaced a section of the floor pan and did it in the most horrible way known to man. They got another piece out of another car, or maybe a new one, cut it, 
laid it over the top of the original one, and then Frankenstein welded it into place. Absolutely should have had a floor pan put in it using factory spot welds, original e-coating, weld through primer. That's just terrible. The disassembly of the drivetrain in the GTX really went well. Once the rear axle is down out of the car, you can concentrate on the front. It went smooth. You unbolt your K-member bolts, you take your upper control arms loose, you take your torsion bars out. Uh, the exhaust is already off of the car. We had disconnected the top side of it before we raised it up in the air. So really then after that, it's just a matter of getting the forklift in position and lowering that engine down out of the cradle. That, my friends, is an engine. That is an engine. That's a good one, too. That one sounds good and runs good. That's a nice one. Now that we got the front and rear suspension and the whole bottom disassembled off of the car, we can let it down, put it on dollies, move it out from underneath the bin pack where we can get the doors open and start taking apart the dash, the interior, the trunk compartment, the engine compartment, and get it ready to go up north for some uh, good old-fashioned metal dipping. Oh, man, this is the life. Yeah. Are yeah. you awake? Yeah, these things are comfortable. Sorry I hit you so hard there. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Wonder what uh, Royal's doing, or Mar wonder what Royal and Mark are doing. Probably, Royal's probably working, Mark's probably doing nothing. Who is it? Who is it? Mark. <laughs> I better answer. <clears throat> Hello? Hey, how you doing, buddy? Everybody comfy? Um, what are you talking about? Well, you think I'm stupid. I've got a camera in there. I know what you're doing right now. Okay, I'm looking at you two all sat back in your little leather chairs, enjoying life, popcorn and candy all over the place. A, a camera? Yeah, whatever. Where is the camera at? You'll figure it out in no time at all, guaranteed. Well, apparently he installed a camera here. Was that here last time? Was that here last? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember that being here. I don't remember a blue light there. Hey, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, buddy. So, what do you want to watch? Uh, dude, we'll probably pass out like last time. You like Jaws? The best one? Yeah, first one was the best one. I think we had a good week. I think it's kind of week that you really like because we didn't have to do a lot of physical labor because you're a lazy person. But we got a lot done in the big picture of things. Biggest thing to me was getting the Hemi inventory disassembled, meeting with Brett and Aaron, really great guys. Really nice guys. Congratulations, nice by the way. You understand that he's got chunks of guys like you in his stool, and you're making fun of his last name? I didn't make fun of his I'll last name. I'll give you a piece of advice. What did okay. I say about his last name? You kept saying he collects Torinos because his last name's Torino. I didn't do anything wrong. Make you disappear. It's not my fault he likes Ford Torinos. He doesn't. <laughs> the point is his last name's Torino, you idiot. He's a Mopar lover. He has two of the 11 1971 426 Hemi four-speed convertible Cudas. So that means there's nine others out there he doesn't have. Yeah, that does mean there's nine others out there. You want to go buy them all, Cool Breeze? No, I don't Yeah, I didn't I think so. Them. And your little trick at the studio, nice work. Got to get up a little earlier now, huh? Yeah. Next time you call me and tell what me trip? somebody's sick in the hospital, I'm not going to show you any sympathy There was somebody all. sick in the hospital somewhere that's a relative of mine, no matter how distant it may be. Somewhere. But you lied. You lied so you could get into the studio because you wouldn't do your homework, just like you did in school when your mom and dad bought you good grades and they I bought did. you your diploma and they bought you the fuel for your yeah. car. Daddy, I'm out of I gas. Oh, here, the... son. Do you need another car? I didn't lie to get in the studio. Josh had a key. Just open the door. You lied to me when you called and said that you were at the hospital with somebody sick. Get it. Okay. Anyways, their movies were good. Popcorn was good. Candy bars were good. Thanks. Were they good? The candy bars, mm -hmm. yeah. With everything, you have a good time? Oh, yeah, I had a real yeah. good time. And you want to share everybody what your penance for your puppet show is? Sure. Do I have to? Yeah. Ridiculous. That's why I got this on. Yeah. Next time you'll know better, won't you? No. Why are you having a wearing mustache?